Hey, hey, monkeys! Welcome to the hottest day of the year in Brighton. Welcome to the show. This is number 10. Two-hander. Two-hander. Don't get to say that very often. Uh, so, today we'll be answering all the, all the questions. Uh, I'm not stopping. We're carrying on. We're carrying on. Uh, we're answering all the questions that have come through. And with me, as always, is Melissa. Hey. 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 Have we got some questions for today? We have. We've, yeah, got, we've, we've, got, got, pa- we've got parcels oh, we've got today. Got we do. Hooray. Hey. Sorry. Putting everybody off. <laughs> All right, gotta love the stuff. Ooh, I'm gonna turn my phone off because it's highly unprofessional. Um, this is oh, this is from Connor Well. So in case anyone Aww. hasn't seen it, I did a Facebook review of Connor's Facebook. So one way that I can bring you guys value is that I'm doing Facebook reviews because I keep going on people's Facebook and and they're not doing the things that I think they need to be doing. So rather than just saying, you can do this, you can do this, I've actually taken to going on Facebook and doing an actual review. But in order to do that, I need willing volunteers who are sort of allowing me to rip through their Facebook. And um, Connor, this week, let me do that, which I was very, very, uh, very kind of him. And also, on the whole, it was really, really good, which is why I chose him, because of the first few, I want people to know um, I want people to know what it's like to get your stuff ripped apart because it isn't nice. And so I, I, I you know, I thought his was really good. So this is definitely that, that, that's a good picture. That's oh, a good picture. Look at that. Picture. So that's going on our wall. I'll be listening to this. I'll be sending you a message in a minute, Connor. Um, so thank you very, very much. And do those things on your Facebook. I promise you, it will make a massive difference, even if I do say so myself, <laughs> which I do. So I will put this on the wall. If you want to send some stuff through, we are starting to get a bit busier on the wall, but we've got so much more space. So I need your stuff. I need your merch. I need your CDs. I need your T-shirts. I need your hoodies. I need your hats. I need your beer. I need <laughs> some glasses. Um, oh, and oh, we've got to put a name that film I on. Just, yeah, I just oh, we'll, uh, we, <laughs> Al, your job is to come up with a name that film by the end of this, and, <laughs> and we'll we'll put it on there. Uh, but thanks to Connor, go check his stuff out. Let's get on with the show. Nice. Uh, have we got some questions? We have indeed. Amy West has asked. She says, "Hi, Demo. Hi. I'd like to produce more creative content, but I'm not sure what to come up with that would help get people interested in my page. I'm a solo artist and find that it's hard to come up with things that are imaginative or funny outside of the usual post plugging my music." Okay, so creativity is the key. How are we going to create content? And this is something that crops up all of the time: is what content should I make? And people think, people think that they need to reinvent the wheel and they need to think outside the box. Creativity is the key, but what is the key is you. So when you are a singer-songwriter, the thing that brings value is you. So I did a video yesterday which was about how businesses can learn from musicians. And the thing that's interesting and the thing that interests me is when you're not a musician, I deal with business people all of the time, and what they love is they love creativity. When you're not a creative and you watch other creatives, they love it. So firstly, don't underestimate the power of you, the power of your journey, the power of your story, the power of of the emotions that you can trigger as a musician. So I know as a bass player, I can pick up the bass and I can play something that might make you laugh, might make you uh, angry, but at the same time, I can do that instantly. I can just trigger an emotion and you can do the same thing. So I think when, when it comes to what content should go out there before we start worrying about the consistency and engagement and all that kind of stuff i would start with thinking your story and how are we going to actually tell your story and actually get you out there because your music is is important but it's just a vehicle to to build the audience and the audience wants to know about you as well as your music i think that to me is a is a is a big selling point. And what I see from musicians, I'm gonna use this as an example, even though I'm not saying this is one, but what musicians do is they go away, they write the songs, then they um, record the songs, and then they put the artwork together, and then they finally get this finished article, and they say, by the way, everybody, I've got a new CD. Who wants it? And your their journey with your CD and your music starts there, at that point where you just said, it's finished. 
Who wants it? That's their journey. And I think it shouldn't be like that. I think we're in an age now where people want to see from start to finish. I, I think they want to see you coming up with all of the concepts. I think they want to know that the, the, the highs and lows of you writing. I want to know, they want to know where you're recording. How are you feeling that day? How are you feeling when you wrote it? What's the song about? All of those questions that you can now answer on a day-to-day -day basis, taking people on that journey until you say, it's nearly ready, it's coming, I'm really excited, we're doing this, we're doing that. And then all of a sudden you say, finally it's ready and everyone says oh, I've been waiting for ages I've been watching this this journey of how you've come to this point and now it's now it's the end of it and, and we can now buy in buy the, the EP or, or get the EP off you so the, the, the journey for me doesn't start here this is not the start of the journey this is this is the end of one journey and the start of the next journey so I think when it comes to what content you can make yes you can be funny you can tell your story but firstly don't underestimate the power of you and what you do and how you make that interesting is up to you I think I had a very interesting conversation the other day with someone who said oh, the problem with putting everything out there online is is I think it it takes away the credibility and I was thinking well tough like that was fine 20 years ago, but this anonymity thing doesn't work. This, 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 we're living in a time now where people want to know about the people behind the music. So I think what you need to do is you need to take people on your journey. Now, how you do that is up to you. But if you keep doing the same thing, firstly, if you just keep saying, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, that's an advert. And you've got to, musicians have to get past this advert thing, have to, because it's so root one. And the, the equivalent of it is, I'll tell you how, I'll tell you, I'll give you an analogy as we're, as we're going down this road. When you just keep saying, I finished it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. And people are like, oh, well, hang on, what is it? What was it sound like? What, I haven't heard any of it. It's not right. It is the equivalent of the guy who goes on Tinder and just goes, fancy some sex? And people go, no, like, why would that? No, that doesn't work. It, like, let's just hang on, let's chat. They get to know each other, and then maybe we'll go for a cup of tea, and then we will go for a drink, and then you can buy me some food, and maybe at that point, you get lucky. With this, it's the same thing. You've got to get people to buy into the sound, the music, the journey, and you keep going until you have the you you, you have enough to hook people in and get them to buy that CD. So firstly, don't underestimate the power of you. You are interesting. And how you get that across in your story is up to you. Vlogs, your music. If it were me, if I was a musician right now, if it were me, I would pick up a guitar and I'd play something every day. And I'd play originals and I'd play covers, I'd set myself targets, and I just wanna put it out there. And it wouldn't be just for engagement, it would just be because I want to put it out there and I want to, I want to bring value to the audience. And I think if I'm a singer-songwriter, how do I bring value the most? I, I sing and I write songs. That's how I bring value. So that's what I would do. Okay. Keep it really, really simple. So to kind of like sum up what you're saying there, would you say it's not so much about sort of forcing content, but letting people more into the content that you're already into your lives? That I think so, doing? yeah. And I think documenting mm -hmm. what you're doing. I mean, I think people don't think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I realised quite quickly when we were doing these videos that I was getting lots of people that would come through and just say, you know, what, what do you do on a daily basis? How does mm -hmm. it all work? So, you know, and I've got the businesses and I'm meeting with musicians. And then all of a sudden people were interested in the behind the scenes stuff of which at the time I was just thinking, who's going to want to see me going into meetings and who's going to want to see me um, writing blogs or come out with video content? Turns out people do. People are just interested in the whole thing more so than just the end result of the video. Yeah. And, and so it's about keeping it simple, documenting what you do and, and realizing that there is value in being a creative. So when you're creating, that is valuable to a lot of people. You're not trying to appeal to the world. You're just trying to appeal to your audience and the people who will like your stuff. Um, all right, so Adam says, Hey Damo, I love the show. Um, my band are hoping to expand our audience outside of our local area and don't know if it's best to go on a tour to build a social media following or whether to build a wider following first and then go on tour. Okay, so... Sort of a which way around. Which way around. And, and you could do either. In fact, you could do both. I, I think this idea of, of, of rules nowadays, I, I am, I've got this new thing, which is just rules are now, they're not only meant to be broken, but they've just gone. 
So this idea of rules are just gone. Anyone who's, who's putting these rules into place, and that could be when you make an advert that needs to be 30 seconds, or if you're going to put some music out that it needs to be on an EP, or it needs to be on, on an album, or it needs to be a single. Or, all of these things are just are just rules that have been put into place. And the reasons why they were into place is because of how music was consumed back in the day. But we're not back in the day anymore. So we are in a time now where people consume music in a very different different way. So they're consuming music on their phone and on their computer. And music is just all around us and it's in the air. And we don't, you know, we don't, this this is merchandise. So, so whilst this is great, and if I can't find this on Spotify, I will play this and I'll just whack it onto my computer so I've got a copy of it. But then this will end up on my wall because this is merchandise. So... All of these rules of bands need to make a record, then tour the record, yes, but you don't have to do all those things. And I think if you are going to build an audience, for me, it's more about targeting the people who are into your music. And it, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be in your local area. If you are, if you, I, I would, I would have the ripple effect where I, where I would go outwards. So I'd start off, I'm in Brighton, so I would start in Brighton and work my way around. However, if I made music that, that, and I lived in Brighton and I made music that just really appealed to the German market, then the best thing about it is I'd be looking at just advertising in the German market and touring in the German market. Um, touring is expensive and, and as we're all aware, trying to make money from touring or trying to even break even from touring is very, very expensive. So you're doing the right thing. If you go on tour in order to make content, that is the right way around. So what bands tend to do is they tend to look into touring and just say, I can't make it work financially because they want to get paid. Well, that's because you can't bring the numbers of people. It's just a very simple supply and demand. I, I, I feel very, very so sorry for promoters because bands always give promoters a hard time. Oh, they want us to bring, the I had someone come through the other day, they want us to bring this many people to a gig. And I was like, what, you mean so they don't lose money? Like, of course they do. Why wouldn't they? It's, it's like, you know, it, it's, it, why are they going to bring in a band that brings nobody? I mean, their job is to get people to a show and their job in doing that is to put on a band which will bring people in. If you can't bring anyone in and you can't bring anyone with you, then you are valueless to that promoter. So in going on tour, you are starting to be able to meet people, build relationships and make loads of great content and show the world what you're doing. And that then is leverage against how much money it's costing you. So you are paying to play sometimes. I know musicians everywhere are going, pay to play, disgusting. But sometimes you are paying to play in order for the greater good. You lose the battle to win the war. And I don't have a problem with that because what you're actually doing is you're building your own thing. You're taking control. And if it costs you money to take control, which that's just business, that's just the way that it is. If it costs you money to take control, then in the long term, as long as you win, then that isn't a problem. So that's that's what I, I want bands to think of. I want them to think of, we will have to spend money, but in the end, we will have a following that will buy our records or come to our shows. So whichever way around they decide to go about it, I don't think it matters. I think, I think for them, um, I haven't seen them. I'd like to, to see the band. So if you can get in touch and, and show us your, your socials. Um, but... For me, it's all about building the audience. Mm -hmm. So how you go around that, whether you go on tour to build the audience, whether you put m music out to build the audience, whatever way, whether you're advertising, connecting people, sat on Twitter, just chatting to people, any of those things, as long as you're building the audience and everything is pointing to that. And, so, and, and in the way that, I always say this, but in the way that building your audience, the key way to building your audience is looking after your audience, is value, is bringing your audience value. And that is what they need to do. So everything just goes, how do we build the audience? The, you know, I would like to do a piece this week. Uh, if you can remind yourself, I'll forget. But mm -hmm. I, need to do, I want to do a piece this week on, on why people make EPs. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Like nowadays, people will make an EP. They'll make a record. And I'm like, okay, that's, I, I've got no problem with doing that. You just need to tell me the reason why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. No, I'm seeing people making an EP. And I go, great, you're making an EP. Fantastic. What are you going to do with it? And it's like, they've got 300 followers on, on Facebook. And I'm like, so no one's going to buy it. So you're putting all that time, effort and money into, into, into what? If you're physically going to give it away, it's going to cost you money. You can't afford that. If you're just going to make records and give it, and make music and give it away, then it doesn't need to be an EP format. Like, stop thinking of these rules. It's, it, they're gone. All those rules are gone now.
Can you hear the seagulls? It's Brighton, don't you know? We live <laughs> so in Brighton. <laughs> I will move on to question number three, um, which is from Lucy saying, what's the best way of getting your music noticed by blogs and magazines? I've tried press releases, but find that I don't get much response with a sad face. And, oh, <laughs> uh, and this is a very, very good question. Uh, and I think people need to take this note of this and probably watch this one a couple of times because this is very important. And the reason for this is because it goes back to the advertising where people are going to a blogger and just saying, review my stuff or here's my record. The amount of times people will email or message me every single day and say, will you listen to my stuff? Like, I, I literally before we did this, I was going through some stuff, at least 10, I had 10 people coming through saying, will you listen to my stuff? I mean, A, yeah, B, why? What, am I do? what do you want me to do? Like, do you want me to give you thumbs up and just say, I like it? It doesn't make any difference whether I like it or not. I like it, I don't like it. The thing with bloggers is, yes, they want to like your stuff, but again, going back to this romancing someone and, and actually building building vibes and building a following and actually getting them into you, it's the same thing whether you're trying to build an audience of people who will come to your show or an audience of bloggers or however, what are you doing to bring value? Because at the moment, the, an email will come through and before that email come through, came through, they will not know who you are. And then the email comes through and then they know who you are. Now at that point, they're gonna make a decision. They're probably gonna get these emails all of the time. Is this gonna bring value to my vlog? Do people wanna read about your vlog? Do I love this enough to do it? On the whole, most music that comes through, they'll just go, I haven't fallen in love with the journey, so I'm just gonna, do I like it? Or they're gonna look at your numbers and go, mm, do you know what, if I review this, maybe they'll put this out on their Facebook and it will be a bit of a, a bit of a collab. So what I would do is if you wanna get in touch with bloggers and vloggers and actually get hold of them, I would schmooze them. So the first thing I would do is I would probably go on Twitter I'd probably find them on Twitter and I'd probably just start a conversation and that conversation would be nothing to do with your music. And this is a bit sneaky, but if there's a blogger who reviews bands in your area, I would t tweet them when they've made, written a blog and I'd just say, love that blog, that blog was amazing. And it will go, it won't go unnoticed, it will go noticed and they'll see it. And then on the, this is a long-term strategy, on the next one, the next blog, you just say, that's great. How, I'm just wondering, how do you like? How do you choose which bands that you get? Because I'm reading all your blogs and, and, and I really like it. Then they're more likely to say, oh, I, I get stuff sent through to me. And, that, and at that point, you've got a conversation started and you're in and you've got more likely a chance to say, oh, okay, cool. Um, like I'm, I'm, in a, I'm, I'm in a band, I'd love to send you some stuff. Even if it's a long-term pro, I mean, that's that's over a week. You could do that over three months. You, you know, everyone does this thing where they just go, I just want to send it out, get reviewed, and then you can fuck off and leave me alone. Just review my shit. It's like, well, that that's just not the world that we live in nowadays. People want value. Everybody wants value. You're watching this because you want value. I'm doing this because I want value from you. The value that I give you is I get to be basically impart knowledge of stuff that I've been doing for 20 years and hopefully you can jump a few, a few barriers and actually get to where you wanna go a bit quicker. What I get from this, is I build a, a, a social media audience, a following, and a community that we can all engage, and people go, oh, that's the dude who does the music industry stuff. That tends to grow, and then from there, over a period of time, I have a solid audience of people who know who I am, and I know who you are, and it grows into whatever I decide to make it. Not financial, but whatever it decides to be. This idea that someone just comes through and just goes, give me stuff. It's like, that is what happens in the music industry every single day. And I get it, and I'm just one guy in Brighton helping musicians, and I get it up to 30 times a day where someone just goes, give me stuff. And I just feel like saying, you fucking give me stuff, and then maybe I'll give you stuff back. Start a conversation, say hello. Don't just say, I want to Skype. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm quite busy. Like, you know, literally after this, I've got 10 minutes, I've got another meeting. Half an hour ago, I had another meeting. I'm quite busy. But... When people come through and they genuinely have got questions and I feel like I can genuine, genuinely help, I've got loads of time, I'll fit you in. So it's about how, again, you are bringing value to the bloggers. And if you email them and say, here's us, here's what we do, will you, will you review our stuff? Most of them will go, oh, you, you'll go in the pile. 
And unless it's something that they really, really love because they love the picture or they love that they, they've heard of you, then maybe. But otherwise, it's very, very simple to just start a conversation via Twitter or Instagram. I mean, there's not many people in the world that are so off the radar that you can't get hold of them somehow, especially if they're if they're doing something in the public eye like blogging. If they're doing something like blogging, they'll be on Twitter, they'll have a website, or they'll be on Blogger, or they'll be on Medium, or they'll be on LinkedIn, or they'll be on Instagram, or they'll be on YouTube, or they'll be on one of the other millions of things that you can find them on. So start the conversation with something which just starts with hello, and just something that complements what they're doing. Go and find some of their reviews, and just say to them, I've been reading your reviews, I love your writing style, it's really, really good. Just that. No, and and by the way, I'm in a band as well. Because otherwise you end up like all of those people. Have you ever done gigs where someone comes up to you after the gig and just goes, yeah, you're really, really good. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm in a band myself. And you just think, oh, fuck off. I don't care. Like I literally couldn't give a shit. Like if he come out and just had a chat and we'd been chatting about it. And then all of a sudden he's like, I love your guitar, by the way. Oh, are you, in, are you a guitar player? Yeah, yeah, I play guitar as well. All of a sudden it's like a much, much smoother route into talking about music and bands. So that's your job. Your job is to start actually more schmoozing people and actually trying to bring them value. Just like you bring your audience value, you're going to bring vloggers and bloggers value. And if they say no, that's fine. You just say, I'm just going to keep going because a week later you read their next blog and you just go another great blog I really like it you know do you know another thing if you really want to get in with bloggers and I can tell you this first hand experience share their stuff like like it every single person that likes my video every single person that shares my video I know more about you than I know about the people who aren't and and every time I go to a gig someone comes up to me and says I'm watching your videos and I'm like, oh, wow, thank, thank you very much. I had no idea whatsoever. Yet, every single day when people like my videos, I just make a note of it. I just, I see them popping in, they crop up, their name pops up, I'm watching them. And then I'll click on their stuff and go, who's this? And I'll click on them and I'll start looking through their stuff and I'm more aware of those people than I am the people who just watch it and go away again. And I'm more thankful to those people because they're one step closer to helping me than, than the guys who are watching it, which I'm thankful for as well. But there does, there does go levels, doesn't there? If someone watches your stuff, you're like, oh, thank you very much. If someone likes your stuff, you're like, oh, that's, that's even better, thank you very much. If someone shares your stuff or comments on your stuff, you're like, oh, amazing, this is absolutely brilliant, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's a sliding scale. So put yourself in that sliding scale by having conversations and also liking their stuff. If you're on Twitter and you see a blogger that you like and you share their stuff three or four times before you even make contact with them, they will know who you are. And then when you make contact and just say, I just love your stuff, I think you're doing a really, really good job, you're in. It's like sort of like a new age networking. Yeah, it's just, do you know what? It's just being a bit patient, that's all. It's just mm. everybody wants, Everybody wants instant gratification. Yeah. Everybody wants to go, oh, I can't be bothered with all that. I just want you to just go, boof, just sort that shit out for me and make mm -hmm. me famous. And it's like, that doesn't, it just doesn't work like that anymore. It's just very, very patient, very, very slowly, just putting the irons in the fire and saying, I'll get back to that in, in a while. And if you can do that over a period of time, if you can if you can be sharing a bunch of these bloggers and liking these bloggers and you've been doing it for a month with these bloggers, then these are the ones that you start making conversation with. These are kind of slow burners and these are the intro. And it's kind of, it, it starts to, you start to build these relationships over a period of time. So be patient and actually think, are you bringing them value when you send them stuff? In a way you are because they need to review stuff. And when I had the radio show, I had to fill three hours a night of content, which is very difficult to do. But you'd be surprised how much stuff comes through. So then it's a case of filtering it. So you've got to bring value. Question four from Toby. Um, he said, what's the best way of making money as a relatively new band to fund what we're doing? Okay, Toby, so it all depends on how you want to, how you want to make money. Because if you want to make money with the band that you are in, then uh, you can do that. Uh, but it is going to go down the route of covers. It is going to go... I mean, for a new band to actually make money doing originals, very, very difficult to do um, without an audience. So if you're looking at making money... Now, there's one of the bands on the wall, this band right here. Now, I met up with these guys uh, about six months ago. And one thing they did is they moved from where they were living into London. And the way they fund living in London, the most expensive place in the country to live, the way they fund living in London and having the time to actually 
work on their career full time is they go busking, they're professional buskers that do that every single day. So they go out and they just stand there and they play music all day and they make enough money to, to, to live and then all evenings or days off they're working on the band. They're getting tighter in the band. They're get you know they they're getting to spend more time whilst they're there chatting, come up with ideas, being creative, making more content. Their musicianship's getting better. I mean, it, it's an absolutely brilliant little business that they've got. They make enough money to live. They're they're constantly talking to people about what they also do. By the way, we're also an original band. You should check this out. And I think that is a really really clever way. And you don't get that. You know, you get bands that say, oh, we're in originals bands and we pay our way through covers, um, which is another thing that you could do. Um, so if you want to do something as a band, that is what I would do. I would also look at how you're going to bring down your outgoings. So if you are in a band, like if I was in a band and I was, I don't know how old Toby is, if I was just finishing music college, so I was 20, something like that, I would look for, and this is harsh, but I would look for just on the outskirts of town so it's so it's not too far removed from town but it's also the cheaper end of the place i would look for the smallest cheapest place i could find i would buy a bunch of mattresses and i would just all live in a room and i would take the outgoings down to literally nothing i would just say no we're not going to flats because that that's going to cost us you know in brighton a flat's going to cost you 700 quid a month and it's three of us so you put all that together you know and that's two thousand pounds worth of, of outgoing just on living somewhere now fuck that we're not going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to have one bed sit and we're going to have one bed there one bed there and one bed there and it's a bit naughty we shouldn't really do it but at the same point our outgoings will be 200 quid each so it's going to be six seven hundred quid instead of two thousand pounds so you don't have to then make two grand that's probably what i'd be looking at if i was a young musician i'd be looking at cutting the costs as well as making the money because there's so many people that 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 just have too much of a lavish lifestyle and then when they tell me what they want to achieve i'm like fuck that's going to be very difficult because you have to make this much money in order to actually live because that's your lifestyle and therefore that takes a certain amount of time, effort and money and, and energy and, and work to actually get that. So I'd be looking at how you could get your income down to nothing. Like I wrote a blog the other day when I was, I moved out when I was 16, 17 and because I was under 18 and because I was at college, I was, I was doing a, a performing arts course, um, I got income support. That income support was £36.50 a week. That was it. £36. I was, I've never been so rich in my life. Like, literally, because I had no outgoings. I didn't do anything. And because I was a, I was a, a fat, ugly geek. <laughs> my mum was watching going, you were not a fat, ugly geek. You were just chubby. No, I was. I was, I was just a fat, ugly geek. But I just sat in my room playing guitar all day. That's what I did. And so I sat there playing guitar, I was in bands, we'd rehearse, we'd gig, we'd play. The only thing I needed money for is to eat and put electric in the in electric meter and to get from A to B. And if I need, you know, like, and I would just, I would be creative and find ways around new strings or whatever it is. I had whatever I needed. It was enough at the time for me at the age of 17 to live easily, easily. And so... You can live off not a lot of money if you are focusing on that end goal and saying that's the most important thing. That is. Everything else is a sacrifice. That's the most important thing. So when it comes to making money, there are plenty of ways of making money. You can do teaching. You can go around to people's houses and you can do teaching. You can do covers bands. You can do professional busking. I would think those are what I call the first step on the ladder. The first step on the ladder for me is we've learned in a structured way we are a safe pair of hands musically and so now we can entertain people we can bring people value by playing at weddings you know going up up to corporate events even pubs i mean you know i, I always talk about weddings and corporate stuff because you know with one, with dk management that's one of the things we do but when i first started i didn't have a clue about weddings like the idea of getting weddings i was like 18 years old maybe 19 thinking right i need to make money and for me, it was social clubs all the way. And I was playing three or four social clubs a week. 
And I was always thinking, but one day I'll be able to play weddings. And it's all relative. You know, when you play Wembley Arena, you're thinking how you can play Wembley Stadium. When you're playing sports halls, you want to play Wembley Arena. So it all goes down. But there's money to be made from anything from standing on the street busking through to going to a pub and just saying, look, give us 100 quid and the band will come and play for a night. And you'll make that back in drinks and we'll split that 30 quid each you know, 30, 30 quid each band. It's not a lot of money and everyone's going, oh my God, how can you live off that? You can't, but you, you have to do it a bunch of times, but you've got all day, every day to then work on the originals band. So when it comes to stuff like offices, I hate, when I was, when it, towards the end of my time at BIM, the, the directors, the four of us, we had the most amazing office, cost a fortune. And I, I was always thinking, this is just too comfortable. I didn't like it. Now, whenever I look for an office, I want something which just does the job. I don't need to spend loads of money on a high rise where I'm sat at the top of it in my ivory tower. I don't give a shit about all that kind of stuff. It's about getting the job done and keeping the cost down to a minimum at all times so I can spend the money on the most important things to, to evolve and to invest. And I think musicians need to do that. If you're living in a flat, a one bedroom flat as a musician, and you haven't got to where you want to go, I would, I, I'd, I'd get, I'd get rid. Is what I would do. I'd say no. We're not, we're not, we're not at that point for a one bed yet because I'm not where I want to get to. I take it back. I go to a bed set. I go into, I go to a shared house. I go and sleep on sofas. I do whatever it takes so I can invest the extra three or four hundred quid a month into the thing that I want to do, into advertising, into building the audience, and so later. I can then sell records or later I can then have all these great tours that I'm making money off. But if I'm not where I want to go, then I need to take my lifestyle back a couple of stages. So those are two things. There is money to be made everywhere. You can definitely make money busking, pubs, social clubs, weddings, corporates, all of those things. But I would look at also scaling the money back so you are you are just spending as little money as possible. And it's amazing how creative you can be at at cutting your costs back. Cool. Um, that is the end of our Hooray! Cool. So, thanks for watching. Um, do me a favour. Like this. Subscribe to my YouTube. Those things, like, you know, like I say, I notice, I notice you. I notice these things and I want to help more. It's just, it's just, it's just a human trait. When someone's helping me, I want to help them more. So, do me a favor, subscribe to the YouTube, like this, comment on it. Also, you know, if, if, I'm okay with people commenting on things and not liking them. There's this idea that um, you need to like everyone's stuff and you don't. You can, you, can, you can say, I like all this stuff, but that stuff's bullshit. That's fine. Come and have a conversation. Let's have a debate about it. Um, but like stuff, send me stuff. I need shit, man. I need stuff for the wall. I, I, want, more, I want t-shirts. I want stuff. And um, anything you need, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or LinkedIn, or Facebook, or YouTube, or go and see my new website, DamienKeys.com, that's nearly finished. Uh, otherwise, peace out. Woo! Bye. See you next week. Okay, stop. We didn't do the movie quote. If you want to win a Skype, half an hour Skype with me, all you've got to do is name this movie quote, which Melissa is writing on the board. And we'll get a few people that come through. I'll pick one and we'll have a Skype meeting. We'll have half an hour. We'll chat about your project, how I can, how I can help, how I see it, um, and see if I can bring you some value. So all you've got to do is in the comment below, all you've got to do is literally write the name of the film. That's literally it. It is. You talking to me? You talking to me, huh? You talking to me? So that's all you got to do. Just put that in the comment below and I will pick one and we will have a Skype meeting. Just the two of us. Cool. See you guys tomorrow.